Hello and welcome to this video about heterocyclic chemistry. In this video we're going to look at the reactivity of some five-membered aromatic heterocycles. Things like pyrrole, the five-membered aromatic heterocycle containing a nitrogen, a furan, five-membered heterocycle containing an oxygen, thiophene, a five-membered heterocycle containing sulfur, and their carbon-fused uh, analogues. The first thing to remember is that to build this aromatic system we need six electrons and we get the six electrons from two carbon carbon bonds and then one lone pair and because we use the lone pair in the construction of the aromatic system this means that the entire energy of the system is raised this means we have a more nucleophilic and less electrophilic so if we treat something like a furan with an electrophile, we can push those lone pairs around the ring and get a tack of our electrophile and lose our hydrogen to regain aromaticity in electrophilic aromatic substitution, which is now fast. Because there's an odd number of atoms in our ring, we can actually push the arrows in both directions. So we can push the arrows either to get reaction at the 2 or 5 position and the 3 and 4 position. However, if we push the arrows through to the 3 and 4 position, the resulting intermediate with a positive charge has the positive charge in the middle of the system, which is less stable than the top in this slide, where the positive charge is at one end of the system and therefore is stabilised across that entire system. So if we go through this slowly... the lone pair on our furan is what drives our reactivity so we can use that push the arrows around the ring to make a new bond between the carbon at number two on our furan and our electrophile which here is E plus this breaks the aromaticity in our system so we regain that aromaticity by losing the hydrogen and quenching the positive charge. If we push the arrows in the other direction, there's nothing wrong with the arrows. We can take the lone pair, we can put in our electrophile, and instead of going all the way around the ring, we can stop at our first hop and this will make a new carbon bond to our electrophile at the three position we've broken aromaticity in the system and that can be restored by removing a h and quenching the positive charge however because the positive charge is in the middle of this system, it is less stable than the top version where the charge is spread out over the entire four atoms. We can see this at play in our usual electrophilic aromatic substituent reactions. If we take something like an anhydride and activate it with a Lewis acid, that's an excellent electrophile, so our furan will attack that, and it will attack it at the 2 position preferentially. However, if we put a substituent at the 2 and the 5 position, such as a methyl group, that means the reactivity doesn't stop, and instead we do get reaction at the 2, and instead we do get reaction at the 3 and 4 positions. If we want to add a aldehyde to any group, a great way to do this is by the Vilsmeyer formulation. What this means is we take an activated agent and we use that to introduce our aldehyde. We get that agent by taking DMF, so NN dimethyl formamide, and treating it with a phosphorus reagent. The mechanism proceeds by attack of the oxygen onto the phosphorus 
driven by the high energy nitrogen lone pair and that displaces a chloride. This is a good leaving group so our chloride will come back in and it will promote the loss of oxygen and the formation of a new carbon chloride bond. This electrophile has a permanent positive charge on it now and so it's an excellent electrophile for electrophilic aromatic substitution. We push our we push our oxygen lone pair around the whole ring and we do the same mechanism we've seen previously and that creates our new carbon bond. However, the result is a minium salt. But upon workup, when we add water, we'll get hydrolysis of the minium back to the corresponding aldehyde. So this reagent, this Vilsmeyer reagent that you get when you treat DMF with a phosphorus reagent is extremely useful for formulation or the introduction of an aldehyde. We can go through this. DMF, so N-N-dimethylformide. Amides tend to be nucleophilic to the oxygen. We can draw the lone pair of the nitrogen coming in and then attack via the oxygen on the phosphorus. This kicks out a chloride, which is a very good leaving group. And in the process, what happens is we activate the oxygen towards being a good leaving group. So the chloride that we've kicked out comes back in and we get displacement of the oxygen, the formation of a strong phosphorus oxygen double bond, which is the driving force for this transformation. and the formation of our Vilsmeyer reagent. This has a permanent positive charge, so if we introduce a suitable nucleophile, such as our furan, we can draw the lone pair going around the whole system. This gives us a more stabilized intermediate and it will attack our Vilsmeyer reagent. We'll get loss of the chloride, which is a good leaving group, to make a new carbon-carbon bond. We've broken the aromatic system, but we can regain aromaticity by pushing the electrons all the way around, following the loss of our H. When we work up this reaction, the water that we use for the workup will hydrolyze our imminium back to an aldehyde. We can see the same reactivity with pyrroles, but the things to remember are a pyrrole versus an oxazole is an excess substituent on that nitrogen. And so we can see exactly following the same mechanism as we've just seen we can react a pyrrole with the Vilsmeyer reagent and we'll get the two aldehyde product. But if that substituent on the nitrogen is big enough, we can actually block that reaction. The steric bulk of a terbutyl group, for example, blocks the reactivity, so we instead get reaction at the three position. Now, when we switch to looking at the reactivity of our benzo-fused five-membered aromatic systems, we remember that the whole system has the same rules, i.e. the electrons used to make the aromatic system are made up of the lone pair, and therefore it's high energy and nucleophilic. But the most nucleophilic part of our system is on the ring with a heteroatom in. So the more nucleophilic part is the five-membered ring, and the all carbon is less nucleophilic. This time, the preferential attack occurs at the three position. So if you push the arrows from the lone pair of electrons and the nitrogen through our system, you can get a new bond between carbon and, in this case, um, nitro from a nitronium cation, and then reformation of the aromatic system by loss of a hydrogen. So if we look at the selectivity in more detail, our aromatic system 
is built up of our six-membered or carbon ring fused to a five-membered ring containing the nitrogen. That lone pair is part of the aromatic system, which makes it nucleophilic and high energy. Now, if we push the electrons through from the lone pair to attack at the three position versus going all the way around the ring to attack at the two position, the resulting intermediate in the case of attack at the three position still has the aromatic ring on the six membered ring but we've broken the aromaticity in the five-membered ring to create that new bond between our electrophile and the carbon. However, if we did attack at the two position, you can see that the entire molecule has had its aromaticity disrupted. There is no part of this molecule which is aromatic any longer, so this is a less favoured route. We complete the mechanism by regaining aromaticity by loss of our hydrogen to give the corresponding two products, the three substituted indole and the two substituted indole. But again, we don't see this bottom one because to get here, we have to break the entire aromaticity of the system. We can see same reactivity with different electrophiles, such as the manic reaction. The manic reaction is the formation of an electrophile between a amine and a aldehyde, an iminium formation. This is a good positively charged electrophile and is a good way to create carbon-carbon bonds with a nitrogen in the product. So as well as affecting the reactivity of the ring, the electron-rich system affects the reactivity around the ring. So if there's a good leaving group adjacent or alpha to our 5 mood heterocycle, and then it was to leave behind a positive charge, well, that positive charge could be stabilized by the lone pairs on that heterocycle. We can push the average round, and we can show resonance forms whereby the charge is spread out over all six atoms, which means that SM1 type reactions or nucleophilic substitution reactions in general are fast. This can be applied to any of the positions around the ring, it can be at the two position or the three position. So if we take these two facts, we have the nucleophilic nature of our electron rich uh, five mode heterocycle that tends to attack through the two position. And we know that if there's a good leaving group alpha to our heterocycle, there'll be substitution reactions. Well, we combine these together and we can, we combine these together and arrive at the synthesis of porphyrins. So if you take a pyrrole, an aldehyde and an acid, the acid activates the aldehyde or ketone to nucleophilic attack from the two position by using the nitrogen lone pair then we get regaining aromaticity by loss of H plus to give us the new carbon-carbon bond. Well, because we've attacked a ketone, the re resulting hydroxyl can be activated by the acid in our reaction mixture. This makes it a good leaving group, and we can push the arrows through from the nitrogen lone pair through the whole system to give off water to create now a new electrophile. But because there's already pyrrol in our reaction mixture, that will attack to make a new carbon-carbon bond. We can keep doing this until eventually we end up with a four pyrrol containing system in the ring. Well, now why is this important? Well, if we uh, remove four of the hydrogens from the system, we end up with this 18 pi electron system with a specific hole in the middle that can fit metals, and that's just how nature um, stabilizes the complexes in chlorophyll 
and iron, some of the most important um, molecules for energy in plants and mammals. We can go through the mechanism a little bit more slowly. We'll start off with our pyrrole. The aromatic ring includes that high energy lone pair. So if we have an electrophile, in this case formaldehyde, we activate that with acidic conditions. We can push the arrows all the way around the ring to get attack from the two positions in the aldehyde. This breaks the aromatic ring, but we can regain that aromaticity by loss of the H to give us back our pyrrole. At this stage though, we still have acid, which can still activate our OH to be a leaving group. And because our electron rich heterocycle is next door, we can get the loss of that leaving group to give us positive charge spread out over all six atoms. Now this is a good electrophile and the pyrrole that we all still have in our reaction mixture is a good nucleophile. So in exactly the same way we drew with our first step, we can draw those lone pairs coming in all the way around the ring to get attack at the two position and quench the positive charge on our electrophile. The final step of our electrophilic aromatic substitution is to regain aromaticity and generate the neutral product. If we do this four times and cyclize in the last one, then we end up with the fascinating porphyrin family of products. So, we've seen that five membered heterocycles are electron rich. Their aromatic system is built out of a high energy lone pair. When we get the nucleophilic attack of five membered heterocycles, it proceeds preferentially through the two position because we end up with an intermediate that has a positive charge better stabilized over four atoms. However, this is reversed in the case of fused five membered heterocycles because if we get reaction through the two position, we break the whole of the aromaticity versus if we get reaction through the three position, where we only break one ring. Finally, if there's a good leaving group next to our electron-rich hydrocycle, we can draw the electrons funneling out to stabilize a positive charge at that position. Thanks for watching. See you next time.